Hi, everyone. So now we're going to turn our attention to the female reproductive system. And if you'll recall from the last video, um, I had said that uh, mammals, including humans, um, have both internal fertilization and internal development. And um, that's a great advantage, of course, because you can protect the baby. But that takes a great deal of energy. And we're about to take a good look at um, the structures that a woman has in order to be able to make eggs, deliver eggs to a place where the, uh, they can be fertilized together with sperm, and then a place for the baby to grow and develop and be housed and protected for nine months. So we're looking here at the female reproductive system. Um, and we're going to start on this side. So we're going to start on the front view um, and then we'll come back over to the side view. So let's let's start by looking at the front view. Now, recall there's three jobs that uh, women really have to do. Make eggs, deliver eggs to a place where they can be fertilized, and then house and develop the baby. Um, and so let's start with uh, where eggs are made. Eggs are made right here in number one. There's one over here and there's one over here. Those are the ovaries. Um, and ovaries make eggs. They also make estrogen and progesterone, just like the testes made sperm, the gamete, and the hormone testosterone. The ovaries make the gamete egg or ovum and two hormones, estrogen and progesterone that control the reproductive cycle. Now for the ovaries to make eggs, they have to do what process? Well, remember, eggs have to fuse together with sperm and therefore must have half the chromosomes just like the sperm so that when they come together, you go back to the original amount of chromosomes. So what process cuts the chromosome number in half um, in order to make sperm, or in this case, here in the ovaries, eggs? Meiosis, in this case, oogenesis to make the egg. So the ovary is the site of meiosis and it makes an egg and three polar bodies that get thrown away. We talked about that before. The egg is released into this tube. That release is called ovulation. The moment that the egg is released out of the ovary into the oviduct. Um, ovi means egg, like the ovary is where eggs are made. An ovum is an egg and the oviduct is the egg tube, the oviduct. Um, and that's where the egg, so if we had had one made on this side, would be released by ovulation into the oviduct. And that's where it would be if there was intercourse, the sperm would swim up through the vagina, through the cervix, up through the uterus, and there'd be some going that direction, some running into the walls, and then one would be up here and the sperm and the egg would fuse together. And that's called fertilization. Fertilization, fusion of the egg, which is monoploid, and the sperm, which is monoploid, is going to make one cell that is diploid. And that cell is called what? A zygote. That's the first moment that the baby actually exists in its own genetics. So the zygote is when the baby is one cell big. Regents question alert. This the regents loves to test. And for some reason, lots of students get this wrong. So pay really close attention. It is in the oviduct that the sperm and the egg fuse. It does not happen in the uterus. It does not happen in the ovary. It doesn't happen in the vagina. Fertilization, the fusion of sperm and egg happens in the oviduct. At this point, we have a diploid cell, the zygote, and it's gonna to start to travel down. There are cilia inside this oviduct that create a little current and the egg sort of floats down this oviduct like a stream, like a lazy river and travels down and down and down into the uterus. And it's here that the baby's gonna develop and grow in the uterus. Now, what is it that makes an, a baby, a zygote, grow, develop, into an embryo and then ultimately a fetus. And there's two processes. First, we have to have growth. That is, we have to start with one diploid cell and end up with hundreds of millions of diploid cells. And so what's that process called that starts with a diploid cell and ends with diploid cells? 
mitosis. So that's growth, right? Remember growth, asexual reproduction, repair, um, and uh, growth. That's mitosis and meiosis, making sperm and egg. And that's it, right? So mitosis, so we've got our zygote. Mitosis is going to make that baby grow from one cell to many, many, many cells. But of course, we have another problem. Mitosis for growing makes identical cells, but the baby isn't going to be one whole pile of identical cells, right? It's going to have a brain, and liver, and kidneys, and stomach. And so some other process has to happen as well. So there's mitosis for adding more cells for growth. And then there's differentiation, where some cells become the brain, and some cells become liver, and some become the kidney. Um, and if you'll recall from what we had said before, differentiation happens um, even though every cell is identical. Remember, if I take a cell out of my cheek, it has the genes for how to make a brain, how to make a heart, how to make a stomach, and how to make a cheek. That cell is only using the genes for how to make a cheek. The others are turned off. And if I grab a, gene, a cell out of my brain, uh, it has all the genes, how to make kidneys and skin and everything else. But the only genes that are turned on are the brain genes. Okay, That process, making some cells into brain, some cells into skin, is differentiation. All right, so just to recap, Mitosis and differentiation are going to happen to that zygote to become an embryo, and it's going to end up in the uterus. It's going to implant in the uterus, and it's going to grow into a baby. It will make the placenta there. I will talk about that more a little bit in a moment. Um, I just want to identify some other structures here. This is the vagina, and this is the cervix at the bottom of the uterus. All right, turning our attention. So that's, that's the woman is looking at you. Okay, so this is from the front. Um, this picture is the woman looking from the side. And sometimes students have a hard time figuring out which way she's looking. Um, she is looking in that direction. She is looking toward the right. Okay, so she um, is this woman, her front, her belly is over here and her back is here. And one of the things that people uh, tend to, or, or is frequently a misconception about, about girls um, is the external openings. We actually have uh, three openings here. There's one in the front for urine, that's the urethra. There's one in the middle, that's the vagina. And then there's the one in the back, that's the anus. In men, the reproductive opening, the urethra, and the urinary opening, the urethra, are the same opening, right? Remember that sperm and urine come out of the same opening in men, but in women, there's one opening for urine, there's another for reproduction, and there's a third for defecation, for pooping. All right, so let's look at these structures. So uh, let's start, it's a little hard to see, but this is the round organ, that's a gonad that makes eggs and estrogen progesterone, that is what? That's the ovary. And then the tube that leads away and comes down to the uterus is right here. So I'll, I'll put my pointer over that again. This is the tube that leads from the ovary over to the uterus, and it is called the oviduct. At the bottom of that is where the baby's gonna grow. From the side, it doesn't look like this. See, here's the uterus over here, but from the side, it looks quite different. That's the uterus. Um, and at the bottom of the uterus is the cervix. The cervix is kind of amazing. At the very bottom of that, this, this opening right here is a tiny little pinhole. It's tiny, but it lets sperm swim in. It lets blood come out. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but it's tiny. At, after nine months of a baby growing inside the uterus, that baby's got to come out of that same little teeny tiny pinhole that cervix. So this muscle at the bottom of the uterus is very, very flexible and it can expand open to a 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter uh, diameter um, to let the baby out and the baby will pass out of there and through the vagina. Uh, sometimes they call that the birth canal. Um, and back here we have the anus 
and in the front we've got the urethra and the bladder that holds the urine. Okay, so I want to uh, just touch on a couple of little things. I want to remind you that the ovaries make estrogen and progesterone, the hormones. Those travel around the body like all hormones through the bloodstream. The eggs travel out of the ovaries through the oviducts. Now, sometimes women will get a surgery where this is tied off, cut over here and here and tied off, and cut here and here and tied off. And that's very similar to the procedure that men have where the best deference is cut. If this is cut right here and tied off, and this is cut and tied off, then if there's intercourse and the sperm swim up through the vagina, through the cervix, up through the uterus, and the sperm gets to here, it won't be able to get to the egg here. It'll be blocked. And if you have a sperm over here and an egg over here and they can't meet, you won't have a baby. So this is a form of birth control, considered permanent. Um, it, Sometimes it's reversible, but not nearly as much as it is in the men. Um, and so if they do that, the hormones made by the ovaries can still travel around. The uterus can still fill with and release blood every month in her menstrual cycle. So the only thing that will change if she gets a tubal ligation is that the eggs cannot meet the sperm. And that's it for this.